Okay, for our second related rate problem, we're going to do this problem here. Sand is leaking from an industrial hopper, machine, whatever. It's falling in a cone shape that is twice as wide as it is high. And if 25 cubic feet an hour are leaking out, how fast is the height increasing 10 after, hours after it starts leaking? So first off, let's give a picture of what we're talking about here. So it's a circular-based cone. We call this the radius. And this is the height. Now you'll notice the diameter of this thing is going to be 2r across here. So if it's supposed to be twice as wide as it is high, this height has to be half of this. And so for this special case, h equals r. So it's kind of a simple case. If it was a different case, it would just be a, a multiple in there for some different relationship between these two. So the sand is leaking down here, and the cone is both growing wider and taller, keeping the same shape. How fast is the height increasing 10 after, hours after it starts leaking? <clears throat> okay, so as mentioned in the first one, what we're going to do is identify the rates, find the relationship between the quantities and the rates, and then use this version of the chain rule, appropriately changing letters to match our problem. So let's start with the easiest first step. And by the way, this also means when you're doing one of these problems and you're given ones, you can't say, oh, I don't know what to do. You do know what to do. Identify rates. That's a reading question, not a math question. So sand is leaking from a hopper, it's falling in this thing. If 25 cubic feet an hour are leaking out, 25 cubic feet are leaking. Cubic feet is a measure of volume. So something is changing equal to 25 feet cubed per hour, which is definitely a rate. And what is changing, of course, is the volume of this cone. So dv dt. So that's our given rate. 25 cubic feet an hour is the change of volume with respect to time. How fast is the height increasing? So this is the rate we don't know. It's asked us. So it's a question mark. Height increasing with respect to time. So dh dt. Okay. So we've identified the rate that's given and the rate that we don't know. Step one is complete. Find the relationship. So we have a volume and a height. So this formula you'd either need to know or you need to look it up somewhere. So volume of a right circular cone is one-third pi r squared h. Now for our particular case here, r is equal to h. So I can simplify this and substitute in an r for h. And even though it's asking dh dt, it will be precisely the same as dr dt. Normally it would be some multiple of dr dt. If it was twice as tall or five times as tall, whatever relationship we would have to account for that. But in this case, I'm going to solve for dr dt and r is equal to h, so clearly dr dt will equal dh dt. Okay, so I substitute an r in here in my slightly simplified version. One-third pi r cubed is my relationship between volume, and I'm going to use, use r, and then know at the end dr dt and dh dt are the same thing. Use the version of the chain rule that's appropriate. Okay, so we've got something with dv dt will equal dv, and I put in the intermediate one, dr times dr dt. Okay. So dvdt equals dvdr times drdt. One is known, one is asked for, and one we can get from the relationship. dvdr is the derivative of this. r is the variable, r cubed. Three comes out in front, canceling the one-third, and I get pi r squared. So dvdt equals dvdr pi r squared times dr dt, and I should have meant to write in the one I already knew, this is 25. So 25 equals dr, pi r squared times dr dt. Solving for dr dt, I will divide this to the other side. 25 over pi r squared. <clears throat> so we can see that the radius is not going to change constant with respect to time. It's going to depend on the radius. When the radius is real small, we get a, a larger change. When the radius starts to get big, 25 cubic feet doesn't make so much difference. So a bigger r squared down here will slow down the change of this. Now I need to find out the actual r that corresponds with the individual information, the particular information given. How fast is the height increasing 10 hours after it starts leaking? Okay, so I'm given t equals 10, and that's not really perfect to substitute in. I need an r. Well, from this I can figure it out, because I know that my case, in my case the volume is 1 third pi r cubed. And at 10, if I've been leaking 25 cubic feet an hour, 
10 times 25 will give me the volume. It equals 10 times time, times the amount, 25 will have 250 cubic feet. And this volume is also equal to 1 third pi r cubed. So we'll solve this for r to get the value to substitute in here. So multiplying by 3, I get 750 divided by pi equals r cubed. Raising both numbers, both sides to the one third power will give me simply r, 750 over pi to the one third. On the calculator, doing this previously, I get an approximation of 6.203. So that's my value for r that is specific to the 10 hours later. So sometimes the specific information doesn't exactly uh, jive with what you want to put in here. So dhdt is the same thing as drdt, as mentioned earlier. And for this particular time, it's going to be 25 over pi times 6.203 squared. <clears throat> and this will only be the case at, at our time 10, 10 hours after. So t equals 10. I'm going to identify that to say this is at time t equals 10. And you can reduce that. And, and I did it previously. It looks like I got 0 0.2068 feet per second feet per, rather it was in terms of hours, wasn't it? In terms of cubic feet an hour. So feet per hour would be my final answer. Let's get that up for you. Hopefully this has been a helpful discussion on slightly more complex related rate problems.